Today is Earth Overshoot Day. According to scientific research, humanity is consuming beyond the capacity of Earth's ability to sustain us. This means that resources are used up at double the rate at which the Earth's ecosystem can recover. Scientists warn that if we don't turn our deficit around, we'll be instigating the first ever human-driven mass extinction. To tell us more about this, I'm joined by Stellenbosch University's Senior Strategy and Sustainability Lecturer, Dr. Yaku Folskenk. Dr. Folskenk, thank you very much uh, for speaking to us this morning. We appreciate your time. So the concept is simple. We're using the Earth's resources faster than it can recover or replenish them. So overshoot day is the day each year on which we exceed the given resources. But why does each country have their own date? Thanks, Andy. That's a, that's a good question. So the, the calculation of Earth overshoot day is done on two bases. The one is the supply of resources of your specific country uh, and then also the consumption of the people living in your country. So in the case of South Africa, we don't have that much natural resources. Uh, we are a fairly barren country. We've got some agriculture. Uh, we've got some meat and some fish. Uh, but we're consuming far more than that. If you compare us against a country like France, for instance, or Canada, that has plenty of water, plenty of agriculture, then they have just so much more. On the other hand, there's also the per capita consumption of South Africans, which is fairly high. If you take into consideration that we eat quite a lot of meat in South Africa, that, we, that our consumption of coal is very high, uh, that explains why we are much earlier in the year than some other countries. Uh, although the, those countries I've mentioned aren't necessarily that early. So the aim is late. to raise awareness, but what are people expected to do in a practical sense? I think there's a number of things that, there are a number of things that we can do. Uh, some of those we already know. There's the circular economy, uh, there's the service economy where we convert the sale of goods and services into or rather goods into services. So for instance, I would rather sell you hot water than I would sell you a geyser. And that means I don't have to make a geyser so that it needs to break so that I can sell you a new one. Um, but something else we can do is something called voluntary simplicity. It's just realizing that we do not need to replace everything, all our material belongings all the time, and that a bigger house doesn't necessarily make you happier. So those are, you know, the the positive psychologists would tell you that the things that sustainability requires of us is actually things which we know also make people happier in the long run, to be content with what you have. Uh, I'm, I'm certainly not uh, professing voluntary poverty. That's definitely not the solution. But the, 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 the rich in South Africa live far beyond what the natural environment can support. And also, it doesn't actually add to happiness substantially. We've seen the COVID-19 pandemic impact in a big way, the way people feel about their lives and that idea of voluntary simplicity. Do you think we've seen a reduction in consumption over the last year because of lockdown conditions? Uh, it's a fascinating point. Um, yes, indeed, in, in 2020, in the year of COVID, uh, we saw that the Earth Overshoot Day in South Africa was actually pushed later in the year by a full month, uh, which means that there are two levers for, for this Earth Overshoot Day. The one is population, so how many people consume, but then the per capita, and we saw the per capita come down substantially, and that would be because people weren't able to shop or maybe didn't want to shop, but also didn't travel as much, didn't fly as much. And we also know that um, some travel is good for the economies and also for happiness, like tourism. Uh, but on the other hand, sometimes we also just fly to places just for a meeting. And we've now learned that, you know, with Zoom and with any other technology, you can actually have meetings much more remotely. So certainly um, it, it can have a big impact. COVID showed us that we can make a big difference. And that's really the big take that we can take from it. Although we don't want another COVID, uh, the things that we've learned from it was very valuable. There are so many climate related campaigns. A new campaign may gain a lot of traction in its first few years and then taper off as people's attention span wanes. How is this campaign going to ensure it makes a difference in the long run? And they are, I think the fact that it's a yearly phenomenon, and we've seen in the last 50 years that that date has moved by a few days and sometimes as much as 20 days every year. So I think the fact that it's a, it's a, a reminder every year and that we can see that needle move. And the big, the big change needs to happen that we need to move that date 
later into the year. So I think it's, it's, it's a wake-up call. In fact, you know, there's so much around us that tell us that environmentally we're in trouble and still we, we don't always pay attention to that. So I think this is really the kind of thing, although we're seeing a lot more um, plant-based food being professed or being marketed, uh, we're seeing changes in, in consumption behavior, but still in the last, last 50 years, we've doubled, doubled population and we've tripled meat consumption. So it is something that we need to consider. How do we decrease the footprint that we have on the globe? Well, thank you very much for speaking to us, and that's something that every household should consider. Stellenbosch University Senior Strategy and Sustainability Lecturer, Dr. Jakub Folskink.